Welcome back, guys, to watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We are ready to look at the national dailies and, of course, what headlines are contained on the front pages of these newspapers. We have the interesting ones for you. I'm glad to see our guest um, legal practitioner Tunde Kolaole is already standing by to do justice to the headlines. Uh, Tunde Kolaole, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. All right, all right. So we'll start things uh, with a look at the leadership newspaper uh, first off, and of course some interesting headlines coming in the leadership. The big one there, a siege on Abuja. They've already called it siege uh, on Abuja. Uh, military police scale up operations against terrorists. And so I don't know if uh, we can call it a siege as of now. Uh, Tunde Kolawale is here for that reason. He'll tell us why. Of course, um, a picture of uh, the five released uh, kidnap victims, those who were on the Kaduna bound train, uh, who were kidnapped and have spent months in uh, detention, finally gaining freedom. This is the uh, the fifth or the fourth batch so far uh, released from captivity there. Uh, this was in our top trending segment earlier. More from the paper, Commonwealth Games, Nigeria wins gold and bronze in discus, silver in weightlifting. It's interesting to see some of these uh, Individual sports give the country glory, not football. I'm sure that if we, we, we do better in these sports, we should focus on them as well. Uh, Deborah, I will implement committee's report. Tambwal, this is talking about a young girl uh, who was killed in, so in, uh, in Sokoto State uh, after uh, saying some things about the Prophet Muhammad. It's sort of a, a religious killing. The government, government has said that they will uh, implement the committee's report. Pension fund assets rise by 843 billion naira in H1 2022. That's the first one, uh, first half of the year. Two weeks after PMB's intervention, FG ASU failed to resolve AMPAS. And uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it begins to ask or make you ask uh, the, do the president's words matter? Um, whether if he says do something, they will automatically do that. It's two weeks since he. He made some statements about this situation. He's also directed that the Minister of Education be directly in charge of the negotiations. Um, nothing has happened till now. Uh, the road has been a further extension to the strike. Uh, 2023, what the Nigerian uh, children want is at the back page of this newspaper. I pity Nigeria's next president, says uh, Gumi, a picture of Sheikh Gumi there. Um, and of course, I'm sure to make for an interesting read the details on page six of that newspaper. 233 local governments in 32 states are prone to flooding. This is coming from NEMA, the National Emergency Management Agency. We move on from the leadership to the punch. Um, the punch also has um, some a security flavored twist to its lead story. Terror attack, NRC suspends Lagos Kanu Ajakuta train services is what the paper is saying. Terror attack. NRC suspends Lagos Kano Ajakuta train services. That's the National Nigerian Railway Corporation. And the riders to that gunmen shoot at passengers' cars, at buses at Ajakuta, a six vigilantes feared killed, travelers panic. And uh, another one there corporation stops Lagos Kano route to avoid attacks in Mina Kaduna and tightens security. So, um, while it's difficult to fly by air and also by road, it's also difficult to fly, uh, to travel by, uh, by, by rail. Only God knows how people will be moving across the country. More from the paper. Impeachment. Shoinka backs lawmakers against Buhari. Kerosene hits 80 naira or 800 naira per liter. Nigerians face hard times. Tinubu's government will be fair to all. Shatima. Uh, bank borrowing from CBN rises 27% to 4.5 trillion naira. I do hope that uh, the banks will not be the next sector to face hardships in the current economic challenges Nigeria is facing. We all cannot uh, afford any more. More from the punch. Oshun APC members protest, demand chairman's sacking. Ondo hospital rations fuel, patient dies during surgery. It's an all too familiar tale. 21 killed in Lagos, Cross River crashes. FRSC blames fog. Indeed, the fog is a, is a big issue when traveling, especially in the morning and late at night in that part of the country. UK licenses 266 Nigerian doctors 
in two months. NDLEA dismantles Lagos Anambra Drug Labs, arrests Barrows. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. So some pictures of the drugs uh, in the labs in Lagos, and it, it's a worrying, worrying piece of information. Over to the nation this morning. Um, some statistical you know, figures coming from the nation, they've been able to break down the, the INEC voter registration stats uh, state by state, and most of the papers have been doing analysis uh, since yesterday. So they devote some part of their uh, front page to that. Indeed, their lead story goes with that. Lagos Kano, top registration. Ekiti by Elsa Yobe uh, Gombe have the least voters. INEC begins cleanup of voter register. Of course, uh, the Northwest um, now has the largest number of voters. Indeed, it already had the lead. Uh, even with the ongoing registration in CVR, the just suspended CVR, the Northwest also led in the number of newly registered voters. The Northwest led. And uh, the northern part of the country topped the southern part of the country. Indeed, people have been looking at it that way, north versus south. It's an interesting way to look at it. More from the Nation newspaper. Buhari assures states facing terror attacks of support. Uh, does that mean anything to you? Flood to hit 233 council areas in 32 states, Nema warns. 21 die in Lagos road accident. Two barons, chemists, held in raid on Umpurimiri labs. All right, this is crystal meth in the southeast of Nigeria. It's called Umpurimiri. It's a, uh, a, you know, popular amongst the youth in the southeast. So that's the name they're given to it. This is not to say it's used only in, south, in southeastern Nigeria, uh, but of course the pictures were on the internet with uh, this crystal meth being seen. It's a dangerous drug that uh, can drive you crazy. Gunmen kill seven guards, all right? It's another one there. And uh, the final few stories from the nation. Bullets from terrorists, guns still in my stomach. Five train hostages free. And this is uh, the gentleman, one of the five who we talked about earlier, uh, saying the bullet is still in his stomach. My God, this is really scary. Uh, strike. Federal government withholding our salaries since February, says Asu. Government side waiting for Damo's report, says Ngigi. All right. Um, I wonder what uh, Asu expects. I mean, the, he said that labor laws uh, stipulate that no work, no pay. I guess we'll talk some more about this when it comes on. Pelosi arrives Taiwan despite China's warning. And the Chinese have all of a sudden this declared they're going to have some, uh, some training exercises for their military in islands all around Taiwan. So I'm sure that that is one to watch. Uh, Tinnable support groups uh, merge. That's another one as well to look at. And the final paper on our table this morning is Daily Trust with some interesting... Um, Stories and daily trusts over the past days and weeks, they've always seemed to have a, a different twist um, and compared to the other papers. This is the lead story, as you can see on the front page. Travelers stranded as dollar shortage hits banks. Uh, I can't access, I can't access for Forex to attend to my health abroad, says patient. Fake applications are nightmare, banks, and we're tackling the menace, CBN. I wonder if it's a uh, fake applications or uh, truly a dollar uh, shortage being the nightmare of the banks. But there you can see that uh, even the patient who wants to travel abroad for treatment cannot um, access foreign exchange to travel abroad. It's really sad. More from the Daily Trust. 52 vehicle assembly plants shut down. $1 billion investment in jeopardy. FG to take health insurance contributions from HMO's custody, FG, to take health insurance contributions from HMO's custody. That is worrying. <laughs> Sakoto governorship, APC, inches towards victory as affection tsunami rocks PDP. How parody accounts feel misinformation ahead of 2023 elections. The paper has something on that. Indeed, the running mate on the presidential ticket of the Labour Party recently came out to say something about that. Uh, Buhari, no single country can contain insecurity. Uh, how vigilantes beat Quranic teacher to death in Kano. And Lalong tipped 
as Tinubu's campaign leader. Let's quickly bring in Tunde Kolawale at this point. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, let's start with um, uh, the uh, the business story there, as uh, which is the lead on the front page of the Daily Trust, talking about uh, dollar shortages. What are your thoughts on this? People are not able to travel abroad, like you see, for treatment because uh, you don't have uh, the forex available. What the, the general principle of economics is that um, it is what you produce and export that will bring you the quantity of dollars that you might have in your CPM to do whatever purchases you want to make from abroad. Since Nigeria isn't producing too many goods, we rely on the petroleum products, the export of petroleum products to earn our hard currency. So if we are unable to sell the petroleum products in the quantity in which you require to sell it, so as to have liquid sites, a savings with regard to foreign exchange, then there's hardly anything anybody can do to solve that problem. The second area is uh, people who are based abroad, Nigerians who are based abroad, they remit a lot of hard currencies home to people in Nigeria, to their people in Nigeria, and then for investment, and also to take care of their siblings. You and I do know most of these people lost their jobs during the COVID pandemic, and the economies in those foreign places, countries are just gradually picking up. So remittances home, which is a substantial part of the foreign exchange that the uh, uh, CBN used to domicile, are no longer coming in. Of course, we are in Ivy know that um, there is still insecurity in the Niger Delta region, which is affecting the quantity of petroleum products that we are producing. Of course, OPEC is also there to give you the quota that you are allowed to sell in the international market. All these things are not favorable to us, despite the fact that um, the war between Ukraine and Russia is affecting the supply of gas and the supply of petroleum products around the world, simply because we as a nation are not prepared to take advantage of the shortages that is coming from this war. Because you don't just wake up overnight and begin to make exports. You need to have plan for it. You need to have clients who will buy from you. You need to have the ships that will transport the oil to the different markets around the world. I'm not too sure that Nigeria has laid down all the necessary infrastructure to be able to benefit from the war between Ukraine and the Soviet Army and Russia. So this, in a nutshell, it's a summary without going to economic complications of what is causing the, the, I mean, the dollar shortage. Nigeria is a rental economy. It is not a productive economy that exports anything. And then all the things that we use domestically, virtually almost 95% of the things that we use domestically, including toothpicks, are imported to Nigeria with hard currency. So if you have that kind of a situation in your hands, you are likely to be facing the foreign exchange shortages that we begin to witness lately. Not too long ago, the CBN accused the our NMPs are limited, that it is because they are not limiting the foreign exchange that they earn abroad into the CBN cover. That's why Nigeria is no longer having as much funding as they should have. And the CBN has come out to deny that in the last six months, they have remitted this social amount of money to the CBN cover, despite the challenges that they also face 
either with transporting the crude abroad or with selling it in the international market. The lessons to learn from this is that Nigeria must find a way back to becoming a country that produces goods and services internally and exports only very minimal products and goods that it is unable to produce. All right, interesting, uh, Tunde Kolo. Let, let's stay with the with Daily Trust. Um, they, they talk about uh, the uh, the HMOs in the country, uh, which are a source for people who work, you know, in public and private institutions to have health insurance. You know, bearing in mind the failure of the national health insurance scheme that has failed over the years, the federal government has come up with a new. Uh, organization agency called the National Health Insurance Authority following the signing into law, a new law by President Mambua recently. And uh, new, fresh information revealing, like the paper says on its front page, that uh, the federal government will take health insurance contributions from the custody. That's the money we pay. I, I, I mean, I subscribe to an HMO. The federal government is taking this money from the custody of the HMOs. They want to take the money. Um, just a, a few lines from the paper. It says, the Director General of the National Health Insurance Authority, Professor Mohamed Sambo, has revealed that the federal government will take uh, health insurance contributions from the custody of uh, the health maintenance organizations called HMOs. Uh, he was speaking in Abuja on Tuesday at a sensitization workshop for journalists on the NHIA Act. Uh, he said the money will now go directly to healthcare facilities. Um, do you suspect that this may may change, may affect, you know, the the current HMO delivery or HMO services in Nigeria, I mean, negatively, or you think this is a welcome development? Because, I mean, I, 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 my HMO gives me everything I want, and it's uh, quite easy, and it's quite fantastic, if you ask me. Well, um, you know, this didn't begin uh, now. Some time ago, or a few years ago, the Minister of Works, Mr. Raji Fashola, has, been, has come out to say that the federal government were going to borrow money that has been saved by the pensioner, which is domiciled in the account of the pensions providers. And this money, what the pensions providers do with them is to invest them so as to be able to generate uh, profit or dividend, whatever you may want to call it, so that when people retire, they will be able to access whatever money they would have saved. So, if the federal government is again talking about taking the money, sales with the health insurance people, and domicile it in its uh, uh, CPN or in its own account and all that, it could be seen as another form of borrowing by the federal government. Before now, too, some states of the federation have been taking money in the cooperative account of the different workers in the different uh, ministries, government parastatals and all that. When you and I do know that cooperative savings is the private savings of the different workers that we have, all over the country. Now, the question to ask yourself is this. If the federal government that says it is broke, that it is finding it difficult to end a not foreign exchange and taking the money that pensioners are saved with their pensions provider, now goes ahead to take money with their insurance people and also begin to take money that are in the cooperative accounts of different workers and all that. A government that, is, that has come out openly to declare that it's broke. Your guess is good as mine. That if guy is not taking, when you as a health insurance saver, when you as registered with the HM, H, HMOs, is ready to access the money, and the federal government and its book is unable to make the money available to the health insurance people or to the hospitals where you want to get your treatment, then 
It means your money may never be gotten again because it might be difficult for the federal government to make the money available when it has openly declared that it is a bankrupt, that it is not any enough money to service the debt portfolio that is carrying on itself. I am not too sure that this is a very cheering news for the different uh, health, uh, I mean, people who are safe with health insurance depot. I'm not also sure that it is cheering news for the pensioners all over the country. I'm also not too sure that the people who serve with the co their cooperative societies are in the best of times with the policies that the federal government has been involved in. It's a form of uh, confiscation of money that are being saved by the different workers all over the country, which they may never get again if the resources of the federal government, if there is no improvement in the economy of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we are in for a very pumpy time in Nigeria. We just pray that God will uh, intervene and the country survives the bankruptcy that it has found itself today. I wonder when, when they take these monies uh, from, uh, uh, from these places, what, how it would affect uh, the delivery of uh, these services. <laughs> you know, they're telling us, the minister, the, the head of the agency, uh, Barrister, is telling us that the money is going directly to the hospitals. And so uh, it will make it faster and easier and all that. And what that, is is what they will, <laughs> that is what they will tell you. When they were taking the funds, some of the funds with the pension service providers, when they were taking money, when state, some state government were taking money, from the wallet of the cooperatives in their state. Those are the sweet things they told the workers. Have they been able to make those monies available for the cooperative society in the different states? Have they been able to return the money when it was required or needed? Seamlessly, so the pension service providers, I is an assumption to hide the real intentions of the federal government, mm. which I think it is not fair. The federal government is finding it difficult to get money to borrow from outside the country, and they are now looking inwards to borrow from workers and also to ask the Central Bank of Nigeria to use ways and means to make money available to her to be able to meet its obligations either in terms of salary payment, in terms of importation of goods and services, or for the running of the government. All right. Maybe the federal government should start a GoFund, GoFundMe account so that uh, people can, can donate money. <laughs> but um, uh, some will say, you know, this is even... Um, uh, uh, some have been praying, uh, Mr. Kolawe, for the day when it will not be profitable to be in government. When you get into government, there's no money you have to think. And then, you know, people will begin to say, you know what, I'm not going to contest for any office. You know, and then you begin to see that people who have ideas will be the ones contesting for offices, not those who want to go and steal public funds, because these funds may not be available as they used to be. But I doubt if this will happen, you know, this whole talk of, oh, uh, let's, let's pray that there'll be no money in the country with the government so that people who uh, have purely noble motives will go into government, go, you know, stand for elections, and all that. Do you think that will happen in the future if this trend continues? Well, it is not impossible. Not impossible in the sense that uh, if we as a nation begin to cut our coat according to the size of our clothes, we have to begin to make the foundation for a producing economy. We also must cut our taste in terms of importation of for necessary goods and services. And of course, there has to be political engineering, which I don't see uh, coming forward in the nearest future. What do I mean by political engineering? I have come back this time without number that um, we could make a sitting of the members of the assembly in most of these states a part-time affair in which 
when people win elections and go into the state assembly, they run at the stage in accordance to the number of seats that they do. They will pay seating allowance, transportation allowance. If they have to stay in a hotel, they will tell our seats will be paid. Of course, we also have to go to the federal level in which the state, I mean, the National Assembly, the House of Rep, the Senate, you pull it down. Maybe to a unicameral assembly, you just have one National Assembly. And then also reduce the number of people who go into those assemblies. You could have one senator per state and two House of Rep per state. So as to reduce the overhead cost. Because in my humble opinion, the National Assembly is a money gossler that um, gives very little or no dividend to the Nigerian nation. Of course, you also have to reject the executive arm of government. So that maybe, instead of having ministers from each state of the federation, you could just have about 15 ministers to run the affairs of uh, the government. Of course, some of the benefits that goes to the people in the executive arm of government today, like the president, the vice president, the minister, in terms of security votes, in terms of um, compelling them to provide for themselves, to feed themselves from the salaries that they earn, in terms of um, cutting down the number of vehicles that the ministers, that the president, that uh, the directors in the ministries can use in terms of cutting them on the presidential fleet, in terms of aircraft at the disposal of the presidency. The not shell is that uh, you have to reduce the cost of governance and also make government less lucrative for people to go into. And of course, you must provide a level playing ground. There are so many people in Nigeria today who would have loved to participate in politics but because there is no level playing ground, because because policy has been monetized, there is no way they could compete effectively with those who are stupendously rich. If you are not very rich, it is difficult for for you as a person, whether as a man or a woman, to participate in elections and win. These are areas we can look at to make government both less expensive and also attractive to those who have uh, patriotism burning in their heart, for those who want to serve the country and not to go into government to enrich themselves, their friends and family. All right, interesting. Uh, uh, over to the nation, uh, to Nicola Wale, we look at uh, the big one. The paper focuses on uh, the um, the election voter registration exercise, rather, that continues voter registration, registration exercise. And I have some stats. Uh, you look at it's doing a comparative analysis, uh, figures in INEC voter register, um, what you had in, in 2019 uh, after the last uh, voter registration exercise before the election, and what you have in 2022 uh, at the conclusion of this recently suspended um, uh, CVR. Um, and it says that the Lagos State and Kano State uh, atop the registration um, as far as the states are concerned. Um, some Nigerians also looking at it on a geopolitical basis. And if you look at it uh, on a geopolitical basis, I'm, so, I'm sure you've seen the, the stats put out by INEC. Uh, it's, it's, you can note that uh, you would see that the Northwest tops uh, the charts, uh, leading the Southwest, or the South-South, rather. And uh, then you have the Southwest as well. Um, the states that are driving the Northwest, we have Kanu State, and the one driving the Southwest is uh, Lagos. Are you surprised that um, Northern Nigeria had more people turn out? I mean, of course, we don't have to look at this always in, in, on a north-south the north -south basis, but this is what people out there in the public space are talking and are discussing. So uh, I'm putting it to you. Are you surprised that um, Northern part of Nigeria had more people come out to register in this recently suspended CVR than the southern part of the country? No, I am not uh, surprised. When you look at uh, the census figures since before independence, when you look at the registration, 
in the return to this civil rule, you will agree with me that the figures that have just been released by INEC have followed the same pattern of the demographics that we have been seeing in Nigeria since before independence. Go and check the census figures and then the registration figures for the election between 1979 and 1983, and then in 1999, and then 1993, you will agree with me that Kano, Lagos, and the South-South have maintained the trend that we have seen uh, over the ages. The second issue I want us to look at is that uh, it would appear to me that the people in the northern parts of the country uh, do better in terms of mobilizing their people to participate in legislation and to be able to vote in elections. Whereas most people in southern Nigeria are mostly non-challenged uh, with regards to legislation for elections. When it also comes to voting, they hardly bother. Our allies who make noise on radio, on television, on the social media, who hardly come out to vote during the election. It is the market women, the petty traders, the uh, transporters, and what have you. The farmers that really come out to vote. The allies are too big to queue up, to stand in the, in the rain or in the sun, to be able to vote for whatever candidates that the campaigning for some of these um, elections. And of course, you and I will also know that there has been a lot of sharper rattling with regards to religion and with regards to regionalism in the recent times. People are talking about Muslim, Muslim tickets. People are talking about the North and the South having the social number of the population and not having it. And because of this, that has kind of scared the people to go out and mass to register. Also, don't forget that the youth have woken up from their slumber and they now say they want to decide the pendulum of victory in the 2023 elections. So the influence of the youth, the activities of the community leaders in the different parts of the country, the activities of uh, the youth, religious leaders, could be said to have informed the figure that we have seen being shown out. But again, sometimes statistics do tell lies. But when you look at the statistics or the figure that has been released, the Southeast is said to have about the least a number of the people who have registered for this election. The reason for this may not be far fetched. Most people, people are very nocturnal people. They are not domiciled in Southeast. Most of them, you find them in Lagos, you find them in Kano, you find them in Kaduna. In fact, you find them all over the nooks and crannies of this country. So when you say the Southeast, who are dominated by evil, are having the least number of registered voters, that statistics may not be actually correct. Because tribes are never captured when people are registering for an election. The thing to drive out is that uh, Nigeria must be working towards evolving as a nation in which not child dichotomy, in which Christian Muslims, in which regionalism will not be an issue, whether in election okay. or whether in the division of amenities. All right. But we should begin to do things based on their own merit. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, to Nicola Oli. We, we've overshot our time, uh, and we'll have to uh, pull the plugs on this at this time. But I want to thank you uh, for doing analysis to the stories you've raised so far, and look forward to having you on the program soon. All right, it seems uh, Tunde Kolo has, uh, uh, we've lost contact with him, but we'd like to thank him all the same. No, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. Okay, all right, so thank you very I'm much for your time, you. sir. We appreciate you, uh, you joining us today, and we look forward to having you soon.
Again? Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Stay blessed for the rest of the week. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and also uh, enjoyed your analysis right there. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a, a, a short you know, take at what happened you know, in yesterday's today in history, in some important events on this day. And when we come back from that, we'll dive straight into our first conversation looking at the crisis in Nigeria's aviation sector. Please stay with us.